coming to Australia. How did you um, go about researching the costumes for Australia and, and how accurate did you try to be with them? Well, Baz is always, whether it's Moulin Rouge or this, which is a historical sort of romantic epic, is always focused on accurate historical research. So you start by investigating what happened in the period, what designers were around, and you also look, in the case of Lady Sarah Ashley, you look at you know, women, aristocratic English women of the period, and you look at the kind of designers that they went to, whether it's Man Boucher or Balenciaga or Chanel, you start to look at what was around, or if you were very horsey, Hermès. So all of those kind of labels, and you you investigate what was fashionable in that period, and then you think about what would be appropriate for the character. You'd be a lot more comfortable if you changed into something a little less uh, constricting. You keep your eyes on the road. Now you were you were filming in the outback. So what, what challenges did that present sort of as a, for the yes. costume department? Well, when Sarah, Lady Sarah Ashley is in her English face, she wears a kind of an English, a more casual but an English riding habit of sorts, mm -hmm. which is a woolen suit jacket and a shirt and a tie. And obviously this was not that comfortable. And there was one moment when Nicole fainted because her <laughs> clothes were far too hot. Oh, no. So I think she was very grateful when she became the far more relaxed Lady Sarah Ashley and she was just wearing a shirt and jodhpurs. And similarly with Hugh, I had him riding into town for the triumphant return in leather jodhpurs and an oil skin and he nearly fell off his horse as well. Mr Drover, there's only one tent. We're not really used to one. A woman? Guests. We're not used to guests, that's what I was about to say really was very clear about his view of the character's development and he not only wanted it to be an inner journey he wanted to be an exterior journey that helped tell the story so he would give kind of cues like saying that she needs to be very stitched up i think she needs to be quite closed in around the neck area and then we need to find a smooth transition after she loses all the clothes on the drove into the more relaxed Lady Sarah Ashley, the woman that's kind of transformed and found herself. But at the same time, he didn't want her to be a schizophrenic person. She wasn't going from being in a uniform to wearing, you know, a caftan, bare feet and, you know, running around the fields picking daisy chains. There had to be a kind of a, a continuity of character. Bring the horse. Oh, this should be interesting. <laughs> keep out of this. The making of Australia and the journey of making it has been extremely rewarding and I have had the opportunity of working on a very large canvas and doing lots of varied costumes whether it be beautiful tailored clothes for Lady Sarah Ashley, the more deconstructed look that the drover wears or some beautiful indigenous costumes that I loved doing. <laughs> Just because it is, doesn't mean it should be. Baz and I have had a professional relationship for about 20 years now. And we've lived together for a very long time as well. And so, you know, we have certain formalities that we maintain. I try not to jump out from behind a bush with a costume drawing for him to sign <laughs> off on at 3am. And he tries to do the same with me. Sometimes we fail. <laughs> We have a lot of good arguments, both personal and professional. I think that heaps, keeps a bit of dynamic tension and certainly clears the air from time to time. And I think that you, you learn. Um, we're a sort of a circus family, an extended family. We work and live with lots of different people because we go out on location. And you have to learn, I suppose, to work and live together in a, a relatively um, respectful fashion. Mm -hmm.